Hi, everyone. I'm Carrie Warnick, Program Coordinator for Multi-Region Purchasing Cooperative out of Region 10 Education Service Center. You are watching a pre-recorded pre-bid bidders conference video for our solicitation to capture pricing on cloud-based software that allows our participating members to connect their back of house software menu planning data with enhanced data coming out of the GDSN or Global Data Synchronization Network. Now, this is something speaking true to my heart because for several years, I had tried to bring in the G10s uh, as unique identifiers to help with managing some very large bid award catalogs. And multi-region co-op is aware that there are a few of you out there providing software that connects our end users, our participating members with that enhanced data. You've got a database probably that is hopefully updated once or twice a week with data directly from GDSN through other uh, portal providers with that. And many of you have software that offers some other unique enhanced features that our members are interested in. So this is an introduction to how do you respond to a multi-region purchasing co-op bid. We do use Bonfire, which is an e-bid software. We are completely 100% electronic. And that means most of the forms are Adobe fillable forms that are required. You will be submitting everything, uploading into the Bonfire program. No need to mail anything to us. Uh, also our communication all goes through Bonfire and I'm going to show you how that works. And also we're gonna take a look at some of the documents that are required for you to fill out and talk about your proposal to this RFP because it is uh, multifaceted, a lot of moving parts, but hopefully it won't beat you up too bad. So I appreciate you being here today and uh, Let's get started. I first would like to introduce you just to the solicitation document, and we're going to look at several documents that you'll be required to complete and sign. And a lot of them allow a digital signature. So also no need for anything to be notarized. So that's the good news. We try to make it easy. All right, let me share my screen. So the first document I am showing is our uh, solicitation document. Inside this document, you're going to find a cover letter. That's what you are viewing right now. And it is going to give you all the details about the timeline. If you have never used Bonfire, right here on page one, the cover letter, we give you a link and you'll click on that. It will take you to a uh, Region 10 portal homepage for Bonfire, which will allow you to access our GDSN connection software solicitation. No, that's a mouthful. Obviously, we've given you a date here. Uh, I have not uh, provided a link to the pre recorded yet as I'm making this and talking about it all at the same time. The bid opens in Bonfire on Tuesday, April 30th at 6 a.m. Central Standard Time. Question and answers all occur within side bonfire, and we'll look at that. The deadline to submit any questions about the bid is May 28th by 4.30 p.m., and then the bid closes in bonfire on Thursday, May 30th at 3 p.m. We will hold a live virtual bid opening, although it is not required with an RFP, but we do this as a courtesy for anyone who would like to attend. It is not as exciting possibly as a face-to-face -face because it is all electronic and we download the documents. We do record the session for transparency and then we don't really look at pricing in the meeting because we go through a fairly extensive evaluation this bid does require a presentation of the software for those that respond. And so, you know, it's very involved and will take us a couple of weeks to get through the presentations and also evaluate. But we do download documents and we do announce who has submitted a bid response. 
Then our projected evaluation date is the 14th. Now, this bid is evaluated by every participating member because it is a by district award. So as you enter your pricing in the proposal, it will be pricing based on each district. And there are several options on which you can price, which we'll look at here in a minute. Now, the solicitation document is several pages. Not too bad, 26. You do have a table of contents. Uh, for the most part, uh, this is where you can find all the different regulations or uh, required bid language for a child nutrition formal procurement method. The special terms is really your biggest area of focus because this basically des describes the deliverables and what is expected in your bid response. So I do encourage you to really read through this special terms and conditions and understand what we are looking for. We are aware that there is just a, a base requirement uh, standard offering out there that offers schools the ability to create a local database within a software and the products within their local database can be matched to products in the global data synchronization network and become enhanced or cleaned up. So we are looking for software that will allow our members to upload through a flat file or uh, import through some type of a um, fully integrated cross-platform feature um, their products out of their back of house software, get all that matched up to GDSN, have it be cleaned up, enhanced with all those details that you find in GDSN. And I'm sure you're aware if you're dealing in the K-12 industry that this past year, USDA uh, began requiring the direct delivery foods to be published to the GDSN and multi-region co-op a year and a half ago began requiring our awarded vendors to provide us with the correct G10s. So it is finally, coming to fruition with K-12 industry products um, and schools having the ability to pull all the data as current data as possible through that local or grand GDSN database. Um, in here, you will see that we are seeking base requirements. And if uh, your company cannot meet at least the base requirements, then Probably not a good match for you, but at least if you can offer the base requirements, please, we encourage you to respond. We've also asked for extended uh, features, such as an ability to play in a, some kind of a menu sandbox or a menu planning feature and costing feature, uh, possibly provide some type of reporting for administrative reviews that the schools go through, and just other various types of information and extended features. So just be aware the special terms and conditions really is all about those specifications and service standards, as well as training. You will be expected to submit a fully written proposal that outlines uh, what your software offers and the training you offer. If there is any fee involved with training, you're going to provide us with a breakdown of how that works. We do expect a a typical onboard training, and you may have a, a small fee, a one-time fee involved with that, uh, or you may not. So we wanna see all the details about how your training and technical assistance uh, will work throughout the contract term. The second part of the solicitation is simply multi-region co-ops standard terms and conditions. This is all the required language for child nutrition bids, not only per federal, but also per Texas. And we also have a school out of New Mexico and they have asked that we include a separate uh, regulation that applies to their state only. So you will see that as well. In the solicitation package, full mouthful there, let me scroll through, um, you're going to find the evaluation rubric. This tells you exactly how we will be scoring each responder. 
And price is the heaviest weighted factor, but we are really looking for what does the software provide in the way of accessibility? Is it navigation friendly? Are there extended features that would meet the needs of our districts? So as you can see, while pricing is a heavy weighted factor, once you do your presentation of the software, all of our participating districts will be scoring on the quality of your software and the usability of use and if it meets their needs. Um, we have a very uh, mathematical approach, a calculation for pricing score, as well as reputation of vendor. We utilize our reference feedback form. We do ask that you submit three school references. And we have a point system that uses a mathematical calculation to get to four points. We do not ding a vendor if we can't get three reference uh, re references returned. We understand that some HR departments will not allow their uh, staff to respond, but please do your due diligence and ensure that number one, the three references you're giving, the emails and the phone numbers and the person is still there at the district and all those contacts are working and uh, that I don't know if you're going to use someone as a reference, it's always a good idea to ask if they can even provide a reference. We will come back and ask one time for a good reference if we find one is not a good reference. But then after that, you know, uh, hopefully we can get three from you and they'll all be good references. Uh, we do score one point if you qualify for hub, minority, woman owned, small or veteran owned, and you do need to provide the certificates for that for qualification. If you don't, you don't. Uh, so that's the evaluation all inside this standard terms and conditions solicitation document. You'll also find a list of the, the different attachments you'll find in Bonfire. What are they about? And is it a document that you have to submit back into Bonfire after completing the form. So some are reference only. We provide a copy of the, the Bonfire bid table. It is in the, the Bonfire program. You will need to download that and complete it and upload it. However, I provide a copy just so you can take a look before you step into that bid table to understand what will be asked of you in the way of pricing and responses. So uh, just know that that's there as a reference. And then of course, our list of members. Now the participating member list shows you number of campuses, number of users uh, that will need to log into the software, total enrollment from the current school year, all that is in the bid table as well. And you're gonna have options on how you offer pricing for just the base requirements and extended uh, requirements on all three of those options. Um, you can offer one option for pricing or you can offer multiple options for pricing. So you do have choices with this uh, particular bid. We do have a vendor participation fee that's involved. Uh, there's a references form. Obviously there are federal and state regulations. We do ask, not that you're gonna have a recall on your software, but there may be times where your software uh, will be down. Uh, whether it's for updating or maintenance. And we do ask for how will you notify and when will you notify? So some type of a document with written service notification procedures is required. We do ask for currently signed as currently as possible. W9, 1295 form is required. That is the state of Texas form. If you are a publicly traded company, this is not required. So, uh, that will be something you'll, you'll attend to at the time of submitting the bid. All right, so there is your bid checklist. Now let's talk about some different documents that you're gonna find in the solicitation. So as I mentioned, there are several forms that are Adobe fillable forms. Texas regulations and federal regulations are two of those documents. And what you'll find when you open these is First, a list of the certifications that are required within the document with a link that will take you to where they're located on the internet if you want to further uh, read about each one. But as you scroll through, this is a read through. You'll find also the link here again underneath each one. This just explains each of these. 
we try not to uh, burden you with signing and initialing in several places. So you're going to read through first, and then you're going to get to some pages where you'll see kind of purple colored cells. And these do require you enter information. If you open these up in Adobe Acrobat Reader, then you can type right into these cells and digitally sign them. So no need to print anything or scan it and upload it. You'll just simply complete it, save it, and then upload it. If you want to print these, that is certainly uh, your decision. We, uh, you know, we encourage you to not waste ink and paper. I'm sensitive about that, but if it's easier to print and fill out manually, uh, I say go for it. Um, so then you'll see there's a page where you will initial, it's just a simple initial saying, yes, you agree to all those regulations and certifications that you, uh, you know, read through. And we do have one, um, one sheet after that. This is Texas regulations where you will, you know, obviously fill in the blanks and then digitally sign. Federal regulations is set up the same way. It's just a different set of regulations out of the CFR, uh, Code of Federal Regulations. And these are all required by federal. Same setup. You're going to read through each one and then you will get to those pages. And I think there are a couple things in the federal regulations that might require, I don't remember where that page is. 24 pages here. I know that sounds like a lot, but if you've been in child nutrition, you're probably pretty familiar with all of this stuff. Good fun stuff. Oh my goodness, where is it? Conflict of interest. You will need to fill this form out right in the middle of uh, page 19 out of 24. It does allow digital signature, like I said. Uh, and then you will get to the last few pages. Disclosure of lobbying, same thing. You'll need to fill this out if applicable. If your company does not participate in lobbying activities, you can simply check this box and move on. And then, of course, you'll get towards the last pages, 23 and 24 will, will require your initials and digital signature. So we're trying to make it a little bit easy on you. Uh, as far as the vendor participation fees, this is a requirement. This is how we cover our expenses and overhead. And uh, it's based on 0 0.0085 of every $1 of revenue. And you are required to submit a quarterly sales report to us. We will provide you with that report to complete each quarter. And then that rate is multiplied and you make a quarterly payment. You'll see the dates and again, Adobe fillable form. You'll digitally sign. Same with our references. You've got space for three school references. If you don't have three school references, then we will ask for some type of a, a professional or business reference, but hopefully you can provide us with three school references. If not, you provide us with at least uh, three good references. All right. You'll find in the downloadable files in Bonfire a cost analysis spreadsheet. I include this in every bid just to give you an overview of an explanation of the cost analysis. This is required not only federally, but also by our state. Uh, and then we give you an estimated contract value. Now, this was calculated based off of uh, enrollment and some current known pricing out there in the market. We do uh, kind of a 10% um, pad on that because we feel that what's represented is about 90% of what we expect. There could be one or two more districts that join this bid. And if that happens, I'll obviously be creating an addendum and notifying every uh, bidder. But uh, it leaves us with flexibility for some growth there. But <clears throat> anticipated contract value is going to hover around that, you know, $200,000, $215,000 mark. All right, so those are the Adobe fillable forms and basic information. And then you've got uh, two Excel forms. This is a copy of the bid table. It is not finished yet, but I just wanted to show this to you so I could get this pre-recorded video made. But you'll see each school listed, total number of campuses, total number of users that will need to log into the software, and their current total enrollment. 
And then there will be these vendor columns. And this is sort of the order it will go in. And we're asking for an annual price. And you'll have the option to give us, and there'll be two sets of vendor columns. There'll be for the base requirements and then extended packages. So you will have the ability to enter either a price, an annual cost to the district, each one based on their number of campuses, if you choose. Um, this is not my preference, I'll be honest, but I've heard this might be out there in the way of pricing. Um, based on number of users of the software, this is multi-region co-op's preference because the number of users is the number of people you'll be supporting and training and technically assisting. So that is the preference. But we also allow an annual price based on total enrollment. And then, of course, this will be for, you know, base requirements. And then there'll be another set of these columns for extended uh, packages. There is a calculator column. This is because Bonfire requires a calculator column. And since we are collecting an annual cost, the calculator column will be based on um, enrollment or number of users times one. This is a sample. I just wanted you to see it so you would know what to expect in this spreadsheet. The other uh, attachment B that is included is the complete list of the participating districts, their location, just street address and city state zip, number of campuses again, number of users needing login and current total enrollment, but we also include which back of house software for their menu planning um, and tracking are they using? I am still working on a few missing pieces on this, but it will be filled in. Uh, <clears throat> but just know that that attachment B is where you'll find this information. Okay, moving on. Now you saw in the solicitation document, there was a link to log into Bonfire and or register for Bonfire. So when you uh, first open up that solicitation document and you click on that link, it will bring you to this Region 10 procurement portal. Now, the bid does not open until April 30th. And so you've received this video one day before. So tomorrow morning or April 30th at 6 a.m. Central Standard Time, if you Click on that link, you should see the GDSN solicitation listed as an open public opportunity. Now, if you have not stepped into Bonfire before, then you're going to need to click on register. It is free. You'll simply click on that link and you'll just type in the required information and create an account. If you have logged into Bonfire before, you can log in right from this screen. And once you log in, uh, you'll click on that opportunity and it is going to take you to this screen right here, the GDSN connection software RFP. Uh, and it is an RFP number of 2024-01. So you'll see that right here, uh, reference number. Obviously this is pending until tomorrow morning, um, but up here, this is the timeline. So this is telling you when uh, things were uploaded, the little calendar will explain when this opens. Other calendar events are questions due and when the bid closes in Bonfire. These are reminders about our evaluation and then of course our evaluation targeted date for completion and award announcement is June 14th. Now down here, if you don't like looking at the graph, I think it's a little difficult. Um, very quickly shows you open date, questions due date, close date, and evaluate date. And that's all right here uh, in a more of a list form. Now your screen is going to look a little different. Your left navigation panel will look a little different from mine. Um, obviously I'm logged in as an administrator. You'll be logging in as a vendor. You will have these details. There will be a link for files and there are eight files that you will need to download. Um, they are called public files. You may see files attached from a message. If I have a public notice or I need to update a document, I will leave the original there and I will upload a version two of that original and it can be found in attached files from messages. So uh, just know you'll see these two buttons up there. All of these that we just sort of reviewed are here. 
and you'll simply, I think there might be a bulk download option, but if not, you're going to click on actions and then you can download that. Obviously you won't be able to delete my documents, but you'll have a download option. Um, if there are any questions you have, um, there is a link called vendor discussions in your version. This is where you will send a question or if you have a comment or whatever that might be, you're gonna click on vendor discussions. There'll be a window where you can enter your question and a message and then submit. Once you hit that submit button, I automatically get an email letting me know a vendor has a question. I will log into Bonfire and I will reply to the question or whatever might need attention. I will send that out and you will be notified that I've answered your question and any other vendor that has stepped into this particular project will also receive a copy of the question asked and my answer. All communication from vendors between vendors and multi-region co-op does need to happen inside Bonfire. If you email me directly, I'm simply going to ask you to post that in Bonfire. So uh, please do so and utilize the system. If I'm going to send out a public notice, I will be posting a public notice. It may include an attachment and anyone who has stepped in and logged in and looked at this uh, particular project will receive that public notice. So pretty cool system. I do love this eBid software. Requested information, you'll have a link for that. Now this is a complete list of everything that is required from you for a successful bid response submission. And you'll notice that uh, I have them grouped. If it's a fillable Adobe form, just so it's very clear what you're dealing with. Is it uh, maybe an Excel spreadsheet, such as the bid table where you'll enter pricing. Um, everything that we ask for is either PDF or Excel for the bid table. And that is for your protection um, and just for hard copy. You'll notice that there are several documents that are required and then some that are optional. So form 1295 is optional because if your company, as I mentioned, is publicly traded, then this is not a requirement. If you don't qualify for historically underutilized business, then you're not gonna have certificates and so you won't be uploading any of those. And then I always give an additional open slot for any other documents that you feel we would want to see are pertinent to your bid response. There is a slot for your comprehensive written proposal. Now this is going to um, you know, include all that training information, what you provide, give us an overview of your company, so there is a slot for that specific document, but if you have anything extra that just doesn't fit into the written proposal or any of these other specific slots, please feel free to use this. If you attempt to upload, let's say a word version of your proposal, the system should not let you upload that. We have requested a PDF. The same goes for the Excel bid table. You're going to download that from within Bonfire. You're going to complete it, save it to your computer, and then upload it back into Bonfire just as you downloaded it. And so when you download that, uh, you don't want to save it as a PDF uh, to be uploaded because the system won't allow you to upload a PDF. So you will be uploading that. Um, so these are all the documents required. Uh, we do have three uh, groups of evaluation committees. Our first group is simply a review. Did we receive your document? It has it been completed. All the, the T's are crossed, the I's are dotted, blanks are filled in, and you digitally signed it if required. Uh, so that is a pass fail, but it is also part of responsible and responsive vendor. Uh, anything that is missing, it's a dock of one point. So just be aware of that. We have a group two, which um, that's going to be looking at pricing and scoring the pricing, the references, scoring the references and so forth. And then group three is all about reviewing uh, what meets the needs of the district. So this is our participating member committee for group three, and they will be reviewing what you submit in the way of pricing, um, what you've submitted, I still gotta check that box, uh, what you submitted in the way of a written proposal, 
uh, anything that might be extra or optional that you've submitted. So um, just know that there will be two or three criteria that they evaluate. Everything else, multi-region co-op staff evaluates because it's mathematical calculations. Uh, so it's nothing subjective, I should say. So this is bonfire and uh, working through bonfire is really pretty easy. It's a, a very easy system to navigate. And um, when, you, uh, when you're ready, you'll go to this area. Mine looks very different from yours, but there will be a submit button down below, I believe in the left navigation panel, and you'll begin the submission process. And it will take you through uh, all the different required documents and you'll simply upload from your computer and then submit your response. It should not let you submit your response without a document satisfying every required slot. So hopefully that checks and balance system is still in place and, and working. If you need assistance with Bonfire, down here in the left navigation panel is this round circle with a question mark. They have a great help center for vendors and you can, uh, you'll see, once you click on that, you'll see Vendor Help Center. And if you click on that, there are uh, all kinds of things that you can search on. Uh, you know, you might see right away uh, different things. You can search their Help Center. They also have, I think, some training videos uh, that you can watch, uh, various things like that. Or if you just need to reach out to Bonfire because you can't find what you need, you need technical assistance with their software, you'll create a new ticket. So if it's technical assistance with the Bonfire program, please reach out to Bonfire or work through the vendor uh, help center. If it's something about the actual solicitation, uh, that will be the Q&A to me through the messages or vendor uh, discussion section. Okay, that is... Everything that I think I can tell you about this bid, um, hopefully you'll have an easy time working through uh, Bonfire. It is very user-friendly. I have found in the past, I've never really had any complaints about it. If you have a question about the solicitation, you know, please don't be afraid to ask. Um, anyway, there it is. So we are looking forward to receiving responses, uh, watching the presentations and learning about your software and finding out how it can help lighten the workload for our members because maintaining back of house software is very heavy handed and tedious and a lot of manual data entry. And we know software is out there to make their lives easier and also more accurate in their planning systems. So we look forward to your bid. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.